If you drive along the waterfront of Madison, Indiana, you can't help but admire the huge house facing the water. It's the beautiful and inspiring JFD Lanier Mansion. And if you're like me, you ask yourself two things. Number one, how did someone afford something that big? And number two, what does it look like inside? Because after all, you and I are very nosy. Lucky for both of us, they give tours at 10, 12, 2, and 4 every day. These start at the visitor center, directly across from the mansion on Vine Street. Let's start with the rich guy, James Franklin Doty Lanier, born in 1800. No wonder he went by JFD. He started practicing law at Madison in 1820. He took chances, became clerk of the Indiana General Assembly, and later became president of the State Bank of Indiana. He flipped his money into the growing railroad business, meatpacking, real estate, and made a boatload of even more money. You've heard that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. He was the first guy. And with all this money, he hired architect Francis Costigan to create this amazing Greek Revival showplace, which was completed in 1844. And you know what? He enjoyed it an entire seven years. The reason for this short stay? He started a bank in New York and left Indiana in 1851 to manage it and never lived here again. How about us nosy people? Take a look inside. The first thing you'll notice is a long hallway. It's not very elaborate, but it is very, very pink. Pepto-Bismol pink. All painted surfaces are very high gloss. A table in the foyer only hints at how fancy this is gonna get. In every room, be sure to look up. This place was built to impress people, and they didn't miss many ways to do it. And speaking of impressive, this spiral staircase goes up three stories tall. This is kind of a big deal when it comes to architecture, or if you have a crippling fear of heights. If you were a guest of Mr. Lanier, your first stop would be here. It's richly decorated in every way, as you'd expect from one of the richest men in Indiana. Speaking of the rich guy, here's JFD himself as a younger man. He was so rich that when Indiana was about to go bankrupt and couldn't even afford to equip its soldiers for the Civil War, he loaned the state one million dollars of his own money. Are you sitting down for this? In 2022, that's the equivalent of nearly 19 million dollars. He had a lot of faith in Indiana and they did pay him back. I'm sure he was pretty glad about that. And because he single-handedly saved Indiana's financial future, the mansion became the first remote museum of the Indiana State Museum in his honor. And by the same token, ordinary, nosy people just like you and I were able to see how rich people lived in the 1800s. If you were a dinner guest, you would be escorted across the hall to a very fancy and elegant dining room. It was admittedly very busy looking. It was definitely a step up from the fast food we have today. And it was served from beautiful pieces of porcelain 
crystal and real silver. This was a pretty classy event. There was not a single plastic fork to be found. A hallway from the dining room leads to a less formal but still elegant space. It's still no slouch, but not like the entertain the queen style fancy that we saw in the parlor. And yet another hallway leads to a place beside the kitchen for a meal without all the pomp and circumstance. And if you're like me, being close to the kitchen is never a bad idea. And then we have the kitchen itself. It had big windows, and for good reason. Before the days of air conditioning, cooking with a fireplace in the summer was extremely hot. Big windows were a necessity. A small, almost hidden set of stairs leads to the area above the kitchen. This is where hot water would be taken up from the kitchen and you could take a bath in privacy. You could be naked up there and people at the street level would never know. It was almost like you were getting away with something. There were living quarters for the help. Contrary to popular belief, there were no slaves here. Slavery was never legal in Indiana. Everyone that worked here were paid workers. Granted, it wasn't a fancy or large space, but as a bonus, if you were in town and someone asked where you lived, you could say, the huge yellow mansion by the river. Having wrapped up the first floor, we move on to the elegant second. These high ceiling rooms give us a glimpse of how rich people lived in the mid 1800s. High ceilings were a practical invention as hot air would rise and keep their rooms cooler. And what rich person isn't full of hot air? The downside? The rooms were cold and drafty in the winter. Each room required a fireplace and probably lots and lots of blankets. Looking south, there's an awesome view of the river. I could definitely get used to that. Truthfully, while I wouldn't choose the same wallpaper and floral prints, I think I could manage living here. Some people ask, is this place haunted? And the safe money is, more than likely, or simply, duh. Mr. Lanier's wife, Elizabeth, tragically died in 1846, having only lived here two years. Some say she never left. One story involves two ladies that were visiting the mansion in the days before all tours were guided they went all the way to the top, came down the stairs, laughing, having enjoyed their visit. The tour guide on the first floor asked if they had any questions. Both ladies replied that the tour guide on the second floor was very friendly, answered all their questions, and that her 1800 style dress was very beautiful. The problem was, there was no tour guide on the second floor and none of the mansion employees wore 1800 style dresses. The tour guide went upstairs, but found no one. Some say the ghost stories are legit, and others say the ghost stories are a bunch of... Hey look, a toilet! 
The mansion was one of the first places with an indoor commode. But it was set up differently than what we have today. Water set in a reservoir high above the toilet, pulling the cord allowed the water to come down and flush. The bigger issue was that there was no sewer and eventually someone would have to clean out a very nasty place below the toilet. I will never complain about my job again. We could end our tour here, but we would be missing something. The third floor was exclusively for the people that ran the house and did the chores. Compared to the first two floors, it feels small and a little bit spooky. It's not a bad place, has windows for light and ventilation and a stove to keep warm. One woman that worked here had a little boy that lived here also and helped with small chores. Mr. Lanier generously paid for his education and school clothes. From here, the only way to go is down. Just hold the handrail, walk slowly, and forget that if you fall, it's a three-story ride down. No matter when you visit the Lanier Mansion, there's a sense of it being frozen in time, like a time capsule. Some people come back every year, not because they think it might change, but because it doesn't. In all seriousness, their memories still live here, like it was yesterday, framed by the unchangeable, beautiful grounds and rooms of the mansion. Every detail preserved forever. If you've ever visited, you might know what I'm talking about. But if you've never been, Maybe it's time you made the trip and a memory that's as timeless as the Lanier Mansion.